Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're going to teach you just a little bit of what to do with a panel. A lot of people are kind of confused what to do with a panel. This one actually happened to be a cat's picture book patches and this ended up being on the UFO table at my local quilt guild, the Erin Village Quilters. Uh, last year in 2019, very at the very beginning, and I ended up nabbing it in my bag for some particular reason, so I took it. It had to do with cats, and then we had a bunch of fabric being donated to the quilt shop with cats on it, so you can totally piece your bag. That's actually a question I have for everybody, so leave it in the comments if you like. What do you think of pieced backs? I like them. Do you like them? So what I have here is nine cat panels, little ones like this. There's a couple that repeat. I think there's only two, two that repeat. Other than that, the rest are, are, are very unique and individual. So I kind of put the repeaters in opposite corners, that sort of thing, and then kept uh, the unique ones or the, the, the ones in the, the center. you'll see it. It, it, it's all good. So there ends up being nine of these, and the way I trimmed them out becomes eight and a half by eight and a half. So it's a great way as a starter for a center of a log cabin sort of build out. You could do a cathedral steps or courthouse steps, sorry, not cathedral steps. <laughs> like that's a whole new block now. Okay, make that up. Uh, cathedral steps going outwards. You could just put them together just like this with a little bit of sashing in between. You could do many things. I was thinking as it was putting together, it could have been four place mats and five, because oh, there's nine of them, four place mats, could make into four place mats, just keep building out, building out, building out in this little log cabin form, having it the center, adding to the left, bottom, to the right, to the top, to the left, to the bottom, right, and just keep building out. Or you can always just add more on the sides too, to build it out to be a table runner or whatever. Um, but you know, I thought four place mats and five for a table runner would be fantastic as a gift for somebody. Or if you know somebody who loves cats, you can put them uh, one strip and make them bulk them out and has it as, have it as a bed runner for their bed, as a table topper for their you know vanity or bureau or whatever. Here's Mr. Clive, <laughs> he was napping just behind me, I swear. Oh boy, that cat. Uh, so I have built out seven the way I would like them to be with a little bit of this goldy dotted fabric here and a little bit of this uh, greeny brown leafy fabric, which is, oh, geez, cat. Mm -hmm. Love you, cat. I love you so much. Come here. I don't know why every time you want to be on okay. camera, we're just going to get you your own camera, your own show, Mr. Clive's channel. So, uh, and then I just did one strip around. So I put one strip to the left, so that was an eight and a half, and it was a two inch strip. And then once I added that, this became a 10 inch strip, so added the 10, and then this became like an 11 and a half inch strip, and then you know, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna leave it at this way. I haven't quite decided what I wanted to do with these blocks yet. Uh, in way that I'm going to put them out. They would make a great start to a uh, baby quilt or a lap quilt. Um, I have some beautiful silver behind here too. This lovely with the little dots on it here, the little texture would go great as maybe sashing in between the blocks and leave them these just the way they are because there's a little bit of gray in each of the cats and what's in the picture. So it's like um, golds and browns and you know grays and stuff like that. So I really like the little detail of the block here with this, um, I don't know, little brown spots sort of thing going around. It just seemed like a really nice texture. So I was hoping to keep that. I'm like, I'm missing a block here. I'm going to blame the cat. <laughs> uh, oh, it's in behind. <laughs> like, what's going on? I'm missing two blocks here. There we go. Yeah, cat's picture book patches. So I don't know whether that's the, uh, all the cats have patches or something or, or what have you, but that's, um, that's how I got it from the guild as in pieces just like this. But I know it was a panel. Um, you can tell it was a panel. So what I want to do is just kind of square these up just a little bit more. Considering you're dealing with the cats, it's clearly appropriate. He's <laughs> being a rump. And uh, we're going to put them at the eight and a half by eight and a half, and then we'll add our little pieces to go around. So I'm going to show you how you do that today. And then I picked this up at the last guild meeting. So I'm very excited to be doing something with this and uh, see what I can do. Yeah, what a nice little challenge. Nobody wanted it. It was a little orphan block. 
So, all right. So we'll build out these little cats right here. Sorry, Mr. Clyde, you're gonna have to go. Hey, buddy, got work to do. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow on the live stream. All right, so they had them in rows here. So that was the top row, the second row, third row here. And we're just gonna take our little ruler. And what I was doing is just giving enough uh, 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 room for us to be able to visually see that little stitch out that it has here on the block, very tiny around the edge there. And uh, maybe you might be able to see that in the iron camera just a little bit better, okay? If much can, can get in on that. And, uh, and, that's, and then just kind of give that as a nice little visual um, depth to the whole little block. So my little half mark on my ruler, when I'm coming into half, I'm putting it on the outside or the inside, I guess the inside line towards the cat. So it gives me a little bit of space to trim up and make it nice and square and make each block square. Even though it's a little bit, you kind of have to tweak some of those little pieces. They kind of want to go on an angle for some particular reason. I'm not sure why, but um, it was orphaned and I'm trying to do something with it. So cat's picture book patches. That's what it's all about. And then we have, we're starting off with the goldy piece first. So that goes on one side. And of course, oh, I have to trim this up first, sir. Um, and then it goes gold on the bottom and then the greeny um, brown onto the uh, left-hand side and then the top. So very easy and a great way to kind of bulk out a little bit of a, you know, a square that you want to accent a little bit. Well, not too much. You don't want to go crazy with it. But it could kind of be your little center square for your log cabin or, like I said, um, courthouse steps and go from there so okay this is a little tiny bit shy in the corner here but we can easily lay that fabric out so it's not going to um, get a hole or anything like that we'll just have to be just a little careful with that one so be careful if you're tripping out blocks like that be careful on giving yourself enough of a seam allowance to work with okay so that mat we're just squares we're going to get we got one going here and one going there and then we got our other ones that are going to go on the bottom just like that and then we'll just build up on the other side and go from there okay so easy over here and start we'll work on these two blocks sorry i thought he was underneath my desk but he moved off somewhere else <laughs> of course you can and start on any side you have started on the bottom you can start on the left hand side the top whatever i just like go right to the right um to me that's um the most logical way to go as i'm right-handed and I don't know, just it seems like we're right, we're the right first. Oh, sorry. I had a fantastic day on Thursday. I went to my local school that I cross guard at. A lot of people know that I'm a crossing guard at uh, the local school down here in Hillsburg. And um, I was teaching approximately 60 kids uh, with another mom. She does uh, home staging. Her name is Melanie. And please do. And uh, we were demonstrating how to make the Joey bags for the kids. So I have, you know, I have a lot of the white fabric. I'm, I'm just going to press these real quick here. But uh, those are some very cute cat blocks. Just so you can see those two here. There we go. Make sure you can get a chance to see those. And then we'll put on the bottom part, okay? So we were teaching how to do the Joey bags. And I have, like I said, I have a lot of white fabric here. So I was giving, I, I bulk cut it and then she cut it out with the templates with her munchkins uh, on Wednesday because we had that, you know, forced teacher strike PA day slash whatever. And, um, uh, and they got to take, they're going to take them home over the weekend and decorate them. <laughs> decorate them with permanent markers and they're going to be the outside of the joey bags and i'm going to use all of my flannel and we put a shout out to local people to donate gently used flannel or 100 percent cotton fabric to be able to go onto the inside of these joey bags and wallaby well, bags too they'll be they'll be both it's a, it's a general size we, they can be used for lots of things and we're going to mail them off isn't that awesome oh, it felt so good it felt awesome just to hang out with the kids and Brought my sewing machine, brought Janie. She didn't act up, thank goodness. She was a good girl. <laughs> and we taught the kids what a sewing machine is and how to sew. And I was going to offer maybe if some kids wanted to try, but I just, I, I didn't really necessarily have a lot of fabric for them to practice on. So I was just really putting like a, um, one of the bags together as a demonstration. So I was like, oh, 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 oops, <laughs> I probably should have brought some more fabric. So they could try the machine, right? They could I wouldn't mind. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it cost me a few thousand dollars, but 
they got to learn. And if they take an interest now, fantastic. These were grade fours, fives, and six. So it was amazing. Had a great time. So thank you, Mel. Never watched this video. Thank you, thank you. We had a great time together. And uh, I'll let you know how it all goes. <laughs> and maybe I'll be able to uh, show off some of their artwork on the bag, outside of the bag. So, yeah, they're going to take them home and decorate them. Uh, permanent markers. I said permanent markers because they're going to be washed. So. So it's nice we're bringing more recognition to these jewelry bags that we can help kangaroo and wallaby pouches and stuff like that to, to help. Okay, so there's the, the, the left and the bottom, and now we're going to do the right and the top, okay? So we'll go here. It's just that easy, and I, like I said, I cut these at two inches. So here, here's one of those ones that I said was a little bit shy on the corner edge here. We're still going to line it up nice and straight. We're not going to go towards the curve of this one or it's just going to mess up everything else. But we have more than enough seam allowance to make sure that is available. And I actually had to teach kids what, like, what is seam allowance. They have no idea. So I said make sure you don't decorate past this part of the square or your design is going to get lost. And I don't want that to get lost. So. Um, I had some questions of like, what can we put on it? Where's Australia? Um, are, is there any species that have gone extinct? I mean, there were some awesome questions from these kids. I, I really wish I would have had the answer or the Google at my fingertips to be able to answer them. So, but um, yeah, apparently the, the principal thought it was going to be about a 10 minute demonstration. Really? When it comes to sewing, 10 minutes won't take you nowhere. So it ended up being about 45, so. <laughs> but they had questions, which was awesome, which is awesome. I want, I want the questions. I'm happy to answer, no matter, you know, whether it's about Australia, if I can, or, or sewing. So it was, it was a little bit mixed, so it was nice. All right, here's our other two sides. It was a good adventure. So, yeah. We, and then I'm hoping by next weekend I can get them all done. We're hoping to get them uh, all the little bits of fabric back uh, by uh, Tuesday, end of Tuesday. And then it gives me the rest of the bit of the week to be able to finish them, put them all together. I may do a shout out to my guildmates and see if anybody wanted to help put like five together or something like that. But I may just, you know, suck it up and just take a day and put them all together. I got the handles pretty much all made. I think I got five more to make. So that's good. It's good. I'm happy they're partaking and they have an interest in it, and they and they want to help. So and they were asking, well, what can we put on? I'm like, you know, put where you're from. Put that you're from Canada. Put that, you know, you're thinking of the animals in their country, and you know, just simple things like that. It doesn't take much. Like these volunteers are going to see the outsides of these bags, and and you know, hopefully be happy and joyful that the. The country that's frozen at this time of the year is helping the country that's cooking at this time of the year. Trying to, anyways. All right, so there's our top piece. Pop a couple of pins in there, keep it nice and steady, nice and square. Okay. And if you have that, a square piece and you're going to have to figure out like what you want for each um, section, like sometimes you may want to do two and a half, you may want to do three inches, it depends on how big you want to make this. I just did these two inches, so they're only going to bulk out a little bit, not too, too much. So, all right, so let's sew those ones, and that puts those two finished, and then it's kind of like, well, what do, I want to, what do I want to do from there? So, we'll lay them out, and then we'll take a look. could easily be a beautiful wall hanging, a uh, lap quilt for the couch if you want to bulk it out a little bit more. And the, sa the sashings could be much thicker than the two. You can make it like a three so you know the big definition between each block. You know, there's a lot of fun to be had here. You can even piece a little section together. You can go around the block a couple more times. That is uh, totally doable. It's all, it's all up to you. You can bulk it up to like 20 inches. Bust your scraps, match the stuff that's in the block, or or go something way out crazy, or just do black and white. So there's those two. Put my pins in my pin cushion. 
Yes, we are in for a load of snow this weekend. Oh my gosh, we lost power last weekend, but here's hoping we don't this weekend. <laughs> it wasn't for too long. It was okay. It was no big deal. We were we were quite content. A couple more hours and we probably would have been a little bit panicky, but <laughs> it's all good. All right, let's move this off to the side. And I will turn this around because I think it was this one. Yeah, this one in that corner. Okay, so here, let's turn this one here. This and there. Leave a little gap in between so you can kind of gauge whether you would like to put something in there. Okay, and then here. And I put the one with the two, like the two contrasting sort of cats, the black with the brown, in the center just to kind of balance it out just a little bit. And here's the other cat with the uh, fishbowl and then the other cat or the cat with the yarn and then the other one with the flowers which is in the opposite corners there we go yeah so this one goes down there this one down there and this one down there and then these are kind of like the three unique ones in between but i think that makes a fantastic lap quilt like i said you can put them all together and make a bed runner you could put two and two and two and make three placemats and a table runner. You can make four placemats and then build this out to be one of the table runners. There's many, many ideas you can do with a panel. So this is just step one or episode one. We're kind of going to try and do one once every month till the end of the year of what to do with the panel. We have panel pieces that have been gifted to the shop. We bought them. We want to use them up this year. So we're going to do the best that we can to do such a thing. So this is number one. Kitty cat panel. All right. So what do you think? Should I sash it? Or should I make something else out of that? Let me know in the comments, okay? Thank you, everybody, for watching, liking, and subscribing. We greatly appreciate it here at the Mom Pop Quilt Shop. Check us out on Saturdays at 1 p.m. where Eastern, where we're usually putting a, a very fun, this year's going to be a whole scrappy project. Right now we're doing something from Moda that was from 2002. It's called Prairie Moon. And it's a free pattern, so if you want, go check it out. Or you can join us at www.wesewit.com and sign up there. You don't have to pay if you don't want to, but if you do, you always get a chance to win an extra quilt that I put together uh, via On the Side and other extra videos that the other people get to see. So thank you very much. Big hugs to you, and we'll see you tomorrow. And here's hoping this gives you a little bit of inspiration on a panel that you have at home. Take care, everybody. Big hugs. <laughs>